everyone and welcome to another episode of Inside the Den. Today we're going to take a look at Gundog. This is a free to play first per actually third person shooter, sorry, not first person shooter, third person shooter. Uh, recently released by OG Planet. So let's get started. Now don't forget to follow me here on YouTube. Also follow me on Twitch TV and also on Twitter for the latest game updates. So I'm going to run through a few things first. One thing I really, really rec recommend you doing if you decide to play this game is go through the tutorial. One of the things that's kind of different than the game is, you know, you see my info here. You can see my ranking, win-loss, kill-heal-death kill -heal -death ratio, headshots. You can see all your stats in here, stuff like that. Then you've got card info. And you can see I'm on the Union side and the Empire side. I have a sniper. Now, you can get all kinds of different cards in different ways. You can see here's my collection. So I've got 278 infantry claws and you can see here are all the different types of cards that you can have on the Union side, on the Empire side. So there's a lot of different characters that you can collect and all those characters are different. They basically range from snipers to machine guns to medics to shotgun to all kinds of different stuff. We can go into no, we don't want to go to the tutorial. Where do we want to go here to show you guys some of this stuff? Collection? No. Let's see here. We're going to run around a little bit. Storage. Storage is basically our stuff. But then you can see here, you got rifle, machine gun, medic, rocket, sniper, and shotgun. Those are all the different classes. And then you have different characters. And they'll have different stats and different, uh, you know, kind of uh, grenades or offhand weapons or different things like that, depending upon who you get. So you see here, you got details, 278 Ivan, collection card, you can see that right there. And if you want, not enough class level. Once you reach a certain class level, you're going to be able to put these different guys and have them in uh, your play card slots. See if we could put him there. No, nope, not enough class level to use Ivan. What's the class level required for Ivan? Uh, probably, no, I'm not sure what the class level requirement is for Ivan, but this is one of the things that I really wish that they would actually do with the game is do some a little bit, uh, a little bit more intuitive nature when it comes to these different things. Some of the things are, you know, because there are a lot of little details going on, some of this stuff can get a bit confusing for a new player. So Either way, I know what you guys want to see. You guys want to see me jump in here and start fighting. So it looks like we've got this hair of the dog, but that's, I was going to say, that's that's playing, but it's locked. So we're going to jump into this hair of the dog, which is steel. But actually, first we're going to go create a room, show you guys some of the options you have. Now, under the deathmatch, you've got deathmatch, you've got occupation, you've got steel, and you've got de demolition. They're pretty straightforward game modes in the game so far. Now, as far as players are concerned, you can do everything from 1v1 up to 10, 10v10. You can also set a time limit. You can set a goal. You can set team balance to off or on, which I highly recommend you put it to on. Otherwise, you're going to end up with all these guys who pile up on one side and get a whole bunch of kills. There's seven different maps available. You guys can scroll through there, and then you can basically hit OK to create your room. Well, I'm not going to do that because there's not a lot of players we're playing right now. So I'm going to jump into this one right here. You can see you got players of all different ranks, and we'll go ahead and jump in there. Now, one of the big things you see is it went from a smaller screen to a bigger screen. One of the things that drives me absolutely bananas is that so many shooters, they have like this 1024 window that expands. But this game actually does a pretty good job of doing that seamlessly. So I am playing my sniper. So you can see there's a bunch of people here just sitting here doing jack shit. And so we need to, uh, we're going to have to make up for those guys not really doing anything. Now, getting to know these maps is very important. You see right there, we've got a guy kind of camping up there. Now, we're going to go ahead and we were hopefully going to wait for him. But no, we got smoked by that guy coming around the corner. Bunch of people are camping. What looks like they are camping our, they are camping our little spawn point. So this is where we need to, uh, switch weapons, take these guys out. Now, one of the things that I have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed in is the fact that the game is a little herky-jerky. So I think it could be smoother, and I just got taken out by a grenade. Awesome. And I wish that they wouldn't allow you to do this. I wish they would not allow players to actually camp the, um, the spawn point of the other team. It does, I've seen it happen a few times, and you can see we are actually getting smoked right now because these guys are have basically given up because essentially 
they have taken and camped our spawn point. So it is kind of a crappy thing to have happen when somebody camps your spawn point, but you pretty much just have to power through it. And we're gonna go ahead and throw a grenade. Now you can throw grenades by throwing with G or with four. And let's see, can we switch weapons real quick? Get our weapon back there. Oh, we got taken out already. Let's reload. There's a guy up top there. There's a few guys everywhere. Now, one thing you really have to... Uh... Now, I didn't actually get him, but he did go down at the same time I shot at him. So that was pretty funny. But you can't... There, The game does have a pretty good set up as far as different areas to kind of find yourself into that is one thing that drives me absolutely bananas though is you do have the dual um you do have the dual uh scope and it's it's not too bad but i wish that it would go single single scope and then like maybe if you held it down i i just think that there's a better way to do it see and there we go again we've got somebody camping in our our spawn point again they know that there's a bunch of easy kills in there See if I can get them blown up. Let's reload. And see, they are they are actually using the one thing that they are using is that you get different skills. Each character has different skills, so they're kind of utilizing some of those skills to be able to move around very quickly and to not get hit by us. But you can see as I'm kind of moving around, it's it, like I was saying, it's kind of herky jerky, and that does when a lot of stuff gets on the screen. It gets pretty annoying, as herky-jerky, like I said, as it can be. So let's take him out. There we go. Got that guy. I love playing the sniper, but coming into a match late like this... See, and that guy's just rolling through our spawn point right now. Not getting killed at all. Why nobody's shooting him in the face, I have no clue. See if we can throw this out there. Catch him, catch him off guard. Catch him off guard a little bit. See if we can't get him. So I think the game, the game has a good idea, but I think it has some basic flaws and some things that really, really could be a lot better. Mission failure. We actually got him there. Finally, the uh, finally the uh, missile launcher guy stepped up to the plate. But you can see right here. Look at this. These two guys who were camping us had 65 kills each absolutely ridiculous because they're just rolling through and shotgunning us all in the face pretty much so it can get really really annoying dealing with that and so like i said there are some things like that that really really drive me nuts and can be very annoying to players and it, it makes it very very difficult for to keep players in these matches when they see other players kind of taking advantage of those situations so it's really tough sometimes to actually find games as you can see there's only three games going on right now we're going to go ahead and jump into this one, and we'll start it right up. And this is Bastion. You can see there's the, uh, right there on the bottom left-hand side, you can see there's all the different keystrokes that you're going to want to use. You've got crouch and jump. And like I said, you do have uh, a specific key for your skill, and each skill is dependent upon which class you're playing. So you have everything from things like being able to sniff out snipers who are hiding, be able to do like an obey where you take and you actually throw a bone and all the all the nearby enemies will run out to that bone, which can be very, very useful. You can do um, all kinds of different stuff is available for the different classes and the different skills uh, that are available for those different classes. So really a lot of fun as far as that stuff is concerned. And you see we've got success. Now this is you basically have to go and capture a decoder. This is a three to zero so far. Hopefully it's not. Yeah, it looks like it's a little overmatched. And luckily for me, it's overmatched in my favor because we're the team that has a lot of people on it and the other team is short. They only got four people. So once again, like I said, I wish the matchmaking and some of this stuff was a little bit better. As you can see, I just used my dash, which is basically your sprint. You can use that for a short period of time. You can see down on the bottom right hand corner, you've got a, uh, a little timer for how long you can use dash and run. Now we'll go ahead and take this guy out. 
Now it looks like we've got one guy left. Now in these matches, the thing that the thing that that presents itself with this these types of matches is that you take and essentially either you you get the decoder and you get it back to you get it back to your uh, your home base there like we just did or you kill all of the enemies. So pretty pretty simple. It's basically just like a a single capture the flag type of a scenario. We've got we've got probably one more to capture. Yeah, see it's still completely unbalanced cuz the person that did this didn't didn't set balanced team. So I think to be honest with you that that's something that should automatically be set is so you don't have teams that are essentially just taking in and piling on and uh, and 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 winning the uh, winning the matches without really having to do much because they're able to uh, because they're able to stack the teams essentially. So that's that's the situation we're in right now is these teams are stacked and see so we basically won that one as well. And there you go. So win round five. Now we're gonna probably I think that's that's what do we got? One more. I think it's the goal is seven wins. So we've got two more. So unfortunately, like I'm not even be able able to show you guys a lot of this because you know I'm you know luckily for me I'm on the winning team, but at the same time you know the people on the other side are probably getting super super frustrated. It's always these little things that come into play when you're dealing with these games that these companies don't necessarily think about, and they really should. See, these guys are probably just running into the uh, into the mix now to try and end it. Let's see if I can get that guy with a grenade. And there we go. So that time we didn't actually get the decoder. We actually killed all of their guys first. But they're probably getting super, super frustrated. Which if I was on that other team, I'd be getting super frustrated too. Probably just sitting there doing nothing. Saying, you know what, this is over no matter what. I'm not going to be able to win. But as far as the interface is concerned and stuff uh, like that, you can see it's super clean around the outside. You've got the basics. Uh, you can see your, your different weapons and your grenades and stuff like that down all the oh, I totally missed the door right there down the down the uh, left side down the bottom corner there I'm probably gonna die because I can't get out of the I can't get out there we go we've got the decoder out here already nope they took him out because he was chasing me and we win but like i said i do feel sorry for that other team because you know what they jumped into a game that was completely unbalanced but like i said i mean the game has some good bones there and it really could be a good game it's just for me there's a lot of little things here that really need some tweaking to really make this a much better game and also keep people playing it like we saw we got a bunch of golden experience there like we saw when we go out here there's not a lot i mean that right now there's 24 there's 30 what's that 33 people 34 people playing the game right now on and on the u.s side when i went on the eu side nobody was really playing it so it really is too bad that there are some of these little things that i hope that they correct really really soon because i think that some of those things uh put them put them in a situation where players are not going to play the game so either way guys i hope you enjoyed today's trip in, inside the den once again don't forget to subscribe and keep yourself updated as each new episode is released also please comment and like this video as i really do appreciate that feedback if you'd like to play or learn more about gundog you can see the full game profile at mmoden.com or just click the link down in the description till next time thanks for watching